So we're now at doing this problem, which I've labeled as four, and they're still asking us to find an interval notation for the domain. So the tips on the quick little mini lecture that I gave you up here, if we have a square root, we are gonna do something. If we have an X under the square root, if we have a denominator with an X or a variable, we're gonna do something. This one, has nothing. It has no um, denominator. It has no square root on it. So this is one of those nice ones, but we just have to recognize it, that it's going to be all real numbers or x is an element of the real number system. Or since we need to put it in interval notation, then um, that's what we do. It is quadratic. So be thinking about it wherever it's going to happen on a graph. It's going to have to go through um, the x-axis two places, but we're not talking down here about domain. We're not, or sorry, range. We're talking about domain, and it would go forever in that x direction and forever in that x direction. And so that now means I'd like for you all to do number eleven. Now. Number 11 doesn't really look much at all like what I just showed you. So I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Since we have an X in the denominator, then that is telling us we really don't care what's going on in the numerator to find domain, but we do care what's going on in the denominator. So it's not gonna be all real numbers, but what you're going to need to do is to factor it. And since it's in a denominator, you're gonna to have to say it can't equal zero. So I'll leave it for you to finish that one, that number 11. And I wanna go on to our, um, it's our, actually our fifth one that we're working together, but it's actually on this page. It is, where'd it go? It's closer up to the top. There it is. Let me go ahead and change colors again. Get us a little bit different here. Um, let me go ahead and do black. And so the one I'd like to do now is right here. And so I've been telling you, if there was stuff under the square root, then we needed to go work on that. But this is a cube root. So let's go back and look at the ones that we've had. We had this one. And uh, on number three, that's an index of two hiding in there. Oh, and right here, there's an index of two hiding in there. So I need to refine my rule up here. Zunk underneath what? Well, zunk underneath here when the index is even. When the index is even, like a two a square root, a fourth root, a sixth root, that's where we're going to run into trouble. But if it's an odd root, let's have a party. If it's an odd root, game on. <laughs> anything can get plugged in there because they're gonna have positive and negative cube roots. A quick example, if I have the cube root of eight, what times what times what gets eight? Well, two, two times two times two get eight, gets eight. But what about a negative eight? I can't just throw that out because I'm doing a cube root. Well, what times what times what gets a negative eight? Well, a negative two, because a negative two times a negative two is a positive four times another negative two, and that gets us our negative eight. So yay, happy dance, smiley face. When we have an odd root, we're gonna have a party and just say, hey, it's all real numbers are possible. So now I'd like you all to do number 13. Pause, do number 13, and when you're done, come back and I want us to do, where's the one I want us to do? Well, I don't see, oh, there it is, up here on the left. Number seven, I want you and me to work on number seven. So number seven has a symbol, it's absolute value, but it does not have either of these symbols up here where I've got uh, variables in the square or under a square root or variables in a denominator but I've got a variable in the absolute value like I was telling you in class the other day. So graphing is huge. A table is huge. Anything that you can do to make this make sense to you. So 
I was talking to you a lot in class about my favorite three numbers. And let's just see what happens. When I put a negative one in my absolute value and add five, I get one plus five, I get six. Well, when I put a zero in, I get the absolute value of zero plus a five, I get a five. When I put a one in, I get the absolute value of one is one plus five is six. So it looks like we're at five and it looks like at negative one, we're at six and at one, we're at six. And so it's going to be a V, an absolute value. So for this one, I don't have any cute tricks, but I do have graphing, I do have a chart. And when I change colors here and look at when is this gonna stop on the left? Well, that arrow says it is not. And when is it gonna stop going to the right? Well, that arrow says it is not. So we get to put on this one that if this is all real numbers. Anything can be put in there for that X and anything is gonna be able to pop out an answer. So now I need you all, let's see, we just did that one um, up down here. There's not another one like that, but I want you to take everything we've talked about and do number 12. I wanna tell you some stuff on it, but I'm not, cause y'all know, y'all can see what's going on there. And so now you and I are gonna do this number 10. Let me grab another color like green and let's kind of see what's going on here. I have a square root. I have an, an X, a variable and a square root. If I have a variable and a square root, then I need to set all of that junk greater than or equal to zero because it's gotta be positive. So my X squared minus my nine has to be greater than or equal to zero. And that's gonna tell me the domain. Well, this kicks in a whole lot of other rules for what all we've been doing, where you have quadratic, and you have inequality. So I wanna go ahead and factor this. Oops, it's still gonna be greater than or equal to zero. Then I get an X minus a three and X plus a three. And so now depending on how you've learned this from professor um, in your um, 13, 14 class or whatever that's looked like with the professor before me, then you need to look at this and decide how you would have handled it with them. For me, I again, go back to graphing. I just need to see what's going on. And so I mentioned in class, we have innies and outies. And so here we go with a negative three and a three to be graphed. And you, again, you might be doing this many, many different ways. And so I want to share that because it's a greater than or equal to, it's gonna be an Audi. And so everything's gonna be going out like that or out like that, not on the insides. But just to be sure, I wanna check a couple of points because it looks like I could go straight to my final answer. But let's check a couple of points before doing that. Let's say, and let's go back to this, this we're doing the original f of x. So let's pick something, oh, let's go ahead and pick negative four because negative four should work. So let's do f of, negative four, so I got the square root of a negative four squared minus a nine. So I get negative four squared, that gets me 16 minus nine, that's getting me a square root of seven, smiley face, that is very possible. That is not gonna be illegal, it's gonna work. Well, let me try a four. Let's see if F of four is gonna work. So that's four squared minus nine. And at this point, you're probably like, well, if it worked for the negative, it's gonna work for this one. So 16 minus nine, square root of seven, smiley face. So this one works, smiley face. But just to be sure, because I need to turn this test in, I'm gonna test a point that's not supposed to work. So I'm gonna try F of zero. Remember, we hope it doesn't work. So zero squared, minus nine equals zero minus nine. I get a square root of negative nine and yay, that doesn't work. It sends us over to imaginary. So to finish this one up, my drawing is good. It's working for uh, this question. I just, um, remember the direction said, put it in the interval notation. I'm out of space, so I'll just put it here. We're gonna come up from infinity, go to negative three and include it. Unite that with three heading out to infinity. And that'll get us an answer for number 10. So now I'd like you to join me. Um, oh, no, no, no. You've got one. That was us. And here's the last you. 
So I'd like you to stop the video and you calculate what is gonna be the domain for this function. And remember, you're gonna write down all of these and you're gonna turn in all of these. The ones that I've done, you're gonna rewrite them with me. The ones that I'm asking you to do, you're gonna do those and those will be graded. It's all gonna be graded. The work that you're turning in that I've already done, but that you repeat it on your own with me. And then the work that I'm asking you to do. And you're gonna upload that based on the directions in the information that I've sent to you.